Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansing. Topping our newscast, they've been calling out for help for years, but now firefighters are saying the situation is getting dangerous for both them and the community. Local firefighters say the issue of low manpower in the territory's fire stations is a real problem that needs to be addressed very soon. News 2's April Knight has the story. There's a limit to how thin resources can be stretched. That's what some VI firefighters are saying about the utter lack of manpower in the territory's fire stations. Well, we haven't hired anybody in the last eight years. According to National Fire Protection Association guidelines, at least four firefighters must be available to respond to an incident, a requirement where VI fire stations fall short. Let's say we need four people. They might just bring in one person and try to shift the manpower, the, um, manpower around to the other stations, but reduce the safe numbers that's required by OSHA and NFPA. Some days, they want to put two people at one station. The firefighters that's on shift, a lot of them are stating that they don't feel safe to work with just two people. Corporal Jeffrey Sibley says retirements and resignations have dwindled their numbers. And while there are recruitment efforts, their reality remains unchanged, and one factor could be low wages. We have firefighters pass, um, pass through from different parts of the world, and they would ask about our salary, and we would tell us, our minimum starting salary and they would be like wow that's kind of low fire service officials have repeatedly testified before the senate on the staffing shortage as well as spoken with government house but firefighters say they hope something tangible comes out of these discussions before actual lives are lost but any fatalities throughout the community we don't we don't want the number to be one we want to keep the number at zero reporting for news two i'm april knight Lawmakers went into session for the second day in a row to consider and approve dozens of bills on Wednesday. In other news, they looked at rezoning bills and legislation to name St. John's Legislative Building. The resolution that got unanimous support was a bill to honor Tim Duncan for his accomplishments and contributions. Ms. Dujerka Parsons has more. Tim Duncan was a topic for discussion Wednesday at the Senate, but for all the right reasons. He has done very, very well for the Virgin Islands. Lawmakers unanimously passed a resolution that would honor the Virgin Islander and pro basketball player for his many accomplishments and his contributions to the Virgin Islands. The bill number 31-0243 to recognize and once again commend Timothy Tim Teodeo Duncan. I certainly I think that is something that, that's truly honorable. And as you know, Tim Duncan is, is pasted here in our walls here at the legislature. He's also shown us you got to get off the flight on St. Croix. The bill was proposed by the entire body. Senators all agreed that Duncan's performance on and off the court is worthy to be honored. You could never, never, never try to undermine the impact that Tim Duncan has on the Virgin Islands. But he's an unassuming person. And a lot of stuff that he does, nobody knows about. He doesn't want credit. I would like to say that uh, he has been honored by this body before, it has been said, but he continues to amaze us and continues to make the Virgin Islands proud. He's a man who is so humble, so humble, that he gives so much and we don't even know about it. The Alan B. Burke Foundation just had a basketball tournament this past weekend. Every single one of those individuals, those students that participated in that foundation had a t-shirt that was sponsored, a short uniform that was sponsored by Tim Duncan. Erica Parsons, News 2. In other news, senators were in an uproar over a Daily News article that mistakenly reported lawmakers who voted against the cabinet pay raises as senators who voted for them. In the interest of clarity, News 2 gave some senators a chance to clarify their stand. News 2's April Knight has details. As we reported Tuesday night, the raises are here to stay. And on Wednesday, senators were eager to make sure the public knows exactly where they stand. News 2 reported the votes on Tuesday night except for two corrections due to an erroneous Senate document. Now on Tuesday, the tally that the Senate provided to News 2 indicated that Senator Jean Ford voted against the pay raises and Senator Novell Francis voted for them. That turned out to be incorrect. That document was later 
revised. Here again is the tally of votes. Please pay attention to those two highlighted corrections. Senators who voted for the override, that means against the pay raises, were Senators Novell Francis, Justin Harrigan, Myron Jackson, Neville James, Tregenza Roach, Samuel Sanis, Kurt Vialle, and Jeanette Millen Young. Senators who voted to accept the pay raises were Senators Gene Ford, Marvin Blyden, Kenneth Gittins, Clifford Graham, Rocky Lybert, Terrence Nelson, and Nellie O'Reilly. Absolutely. I was against the raises. We're all in this together, and it's a shared sacrifice and a shared commitment. The governor was within his authority to state what salaries he wants to pay his in individuals. Moreover, I believe that a compromise was offered to the legislature. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Former Lieutenant Governor and Judge Julia Brady lay in state for several hours Wednesday at Government House on St. Croix. The streets in Christiansted were blocked off and motorists rerouted so the community could pay their respects to the family. Lieutenant Governor Brady's widow and other family members viewed the body and received dignitaries and other members of the public. Brady's body will lie in state Thursday at Government House St. Thomas and then funeral services will be held for him Friday on St. Croix at Holy Cross Catholic Church. Well, on Thursday, September 24th, Brady's body will lie in state, as we just mentioned, from 12 to 3 at Government House St. Thomas. The service is scheduled for Friday, September 25th. Viewing is at 9.30 a.m. to 10.30. Then the funeral mass begins following the viewing at 10.30 a.m. at Holy Cross Catholic Church, Christian said St. Croix. There will be a road closure in Charlotte Amali Thursday to allow for the Honorable Julio Brady to line state at Government House in Charlotte Amali. Congans Gata Government House uh, he will be will be closed from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Provisions will be allowed for safe passage of the handicapped and elderly in need of assistance. Travelers are encouraged to utilize alternative routes in order to avoid delays. Government officials joined the community in sad news mourning the passing of former Virgin Islands Police Chief David Canton. The Senate recognized Canton's achievements on Tuesday and Government House sent out condolences. Governor Mapp said Canton set the standard for criminal investigative technique and supervision. He was known as a great detective and may have been the pioneer of community policing in the territory, according to the governor. Our condolences to Mr. Canton's family and friends. On Tuesday, September 22nd, at roughly 1.35 a.m., officers responded to the report of a body of a man found in the area known as Sanchez Town in Nada. The body was found with a visible laceration to the left side of his head. He was later identified as 56-year-old Elmid Daniel Sr. Investigation revealed that at 1 a.m., Maria Brown approached the victim in the area of Sanchez Town, and the two became embroiled in a verbal altercation. Brown picked up a rock and struck Elmid Daniel Sr. in the head. Daniel was pronounced dead at the scene. We'll turn in our attention overseas. A busy first day in the nation's capital for Pope Francis. He was welcomed to the U.S. with a lavish ceremony at the White House. And he's far from done today. Chris Welsh is in the Washington with the latest. Pope Francis' first visit to the U.S. is grinding Washington to a halt. A sea of screaming faithful filled the streets of the nation's capital as the Pope made his way to St. Matthew's Cathedral. Speaking to a collection of U.S. bishops, the pontiff pulled no punches. He told the bishops to make sure the sex abuse scandal that rocked the Catholic Church never happens again. We know how much the wounds of these last few years have weighed on your spirit. And we have to hope that such crimes will never repeat themselves. Earlier in the day, President Obama extended a warm welcome to the Holy Father. We see a living example of Jesus' teachings. Neither leader shied away from the tough issues. Climate change is a problem we can no longer be left to a future generation. You remind us that the Lord's most powerful message is mercy. From the refugee who flees war-torn lands to the immigrant who leaves home in search of a better life. Pope Francis even quoted Martin Luther King Jr., urging more be done for the poor and the planet. We can say that we have defaulted on a promissory note, and now 
is the time to honor it. Reporting in Washington, I'm Chris Welch. And keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. As we can see, everything down there. The Dow down 50, NASDAQ 3, S&P 500 also 3. Coming up on News 2, the VIPD's Crime Prevention Unit is talking directly to the young ones about bullying with some ongoing sessions. Details coming up. Welcome back. Smith Bay and Kappa, along with Zone C Commander, recognized four officers by thanking them and presenting them with plaques for jobs well done. They are being recognized because of their quick action during the apprehension of suspects and shots fired in the neighborhood. So big congrats to Ms. Janae Forbes, Officer Anglia Trent, Officer Adora John, and Officer Derek Buganu. Main Street St. Thomas will be closed to vehicular traffic beginning at 8 a.m. on Friday, September 25th, and that's in preparation for St. Thomas Eats, a food truck fed that's from 4.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Downtown Revitalization Inc. invites residents and visitors to come downtown. Stores open late and for the first time ever, favorite food vans from around the island such as Hillary's, Mr. Weeks, Hot on Wheels and Chichi's True Creole as well as Armstrong Ice Cream and Rudy's Freco Truck. There will be a People's Choice Award live entertainment by Pipe Dreams, Flip Switch, The Rising Stars, and Dion Parsons. Again, that's on Friday. The Starkel Theater will host the next Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours on Thursday, September 24th, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at their location in Tillett Gardens. Join them as they celebrate the beginning of the 25th season in existence since 1991. Pistarkel Theater's mission is to provide quality professional theater training and educational programming that is designed to enlighten and entertain. So you can look forward to fantastic food, famous cash bar, amazing prizes, and the opportunity to get a free gift with your 2015-2016 season membership. All this week, the students at St. Croix's Career and Technical Education School, they've been attending anti-bullying workshops. The sessions are being offered by the VI Police Department in conjunction with the school's administration as part of an initiative through the Department of Education. At the end of the week, close to 1,000 students will have gotten the message. News 2's Erica Parsons has the story. Anti-bullying messages are everywhere on the Career and Technical Education School's campus. The commissioner stressed very much that she wanted absolutely no bullying on campus, okay? So it was up to us to come up with all the signs. Nearly 900 students have been participating in anti-bullying sessions presented by the VI Police Department and the school's administration this week. Every child has a right to come to school in a uh, bully-free zone where they don't feel that they should be fearful if they go into the bathrooms, the lunchrooms, or even walking in the hallway. And I want students to understand that the certain things that they display is not acceptable, and bullying is one of them that is not acceptable. The VIPD takes their anti-bullying message to all the schools, teaching students about the different types of bullying. They've seen quite a few cases in recent years. Right. We do have cyberbullying and um, we have the Facebook, we have emotional, we have physical, we have social bullying where you decide somebody's not good enough to be in your group also. And we, texting is one of the bullying tendencies or forms that we also have that people need to be aware of. The school's guidance counselor told the students she's also there if they need support. If they're being harassed, they need to let an adult on campus know. A lot of times you have students who don't want to come to school because of being bullied by another student. And we don't know what's going on. Our goal here is to nip it in the bud as soon as possible. Um, so we're going to be flooding the schools. At the end of the workshop, the students all pledged not to be a bully in any case. Erica Parsons, News 2. Now, the anti-bullying workshops will continue for the rest of the week on the SeaTech campus. So far this week, they've held about a dozen sessions. September is Suicide Prevention Month. On a national level, the Army National Guard Suicide Prevention Program is presenting a comprehensive outreach campaign designed to raise awareness of the importance of recognizing suicidal behaviors. 
Now here in the VI, events are coming up this Friday. They've been recognizing all month. This Friday, it's Jazz on the Lawn featuring the Kiever Hendrix Jazz Combo at the historical ruins on the Estate Bethlehem Military Compound on St. Croix. That's from 6 to 9. Also on Friday, the Battle Fun Day earlier in the day from 2.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now on St. Thomas, the Smoked with M2, which is an exercise session with the Metallic Muscle Group. That will be held at the Leonard Francis Readiness Center, Armory in Estate Nazareth. That's from 4 to 5.30. Be sure to stick around. You need to accurate the forecast. It's coming up next.